السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈی ایس اسٹوڈنٹس آف اسٹینڈرڈ نائنتھ ویلکم ٹو دا آن لائن لیکچر سیریز فار دا سبجیکٹ آف سائنس ٹو ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی ہیڈ ڈسکشن آن بایو ٹیکنالوجی اینڈ اٹس امپورٹنس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ دی ایپلیکیشن آف بایو ٹیکنالوجی in floriculture nurseries and forestry so let us start nurseries are necessary for various purposes like growing gardens on a large scale afforestation reforestation seedlings have to be supplied in large numbers for all these purposes It is profitable in such cases to produce plantlets with the help of tissue culture techniques. So tissue culture was taught to you in the last lecture in which it was told to you and in tissue culture we have to develop tissues with the cells by keeping them in nutritive rich medium and that cells they grow multiply themselves into new plantlets. and then they are transferred in the actual field where they grow into a new plant body so this tissue culture technique is a part of biotechnology and this tissue culture can be used to grow those plants on a large scale which bear flowers fruits of excellent quality fully grown plants can be produced in shorter duration with the help of tissue culture plants can be grown on large scale even if means of pollination or germinating seeds are not available so many of the time plants grow only due to pollination only due to germinating seeds but this plants can also be grown with the help of biotechnology if we have the cells of this plants grown in nutritive rich medium okay and then we have the plants growing in a field as well with the help of this tissue culture technique for example orchids or peacher plant do not germinate but this plants can be easily produced by means of tissue culture so in a bio reactor cells can be grown in more nutritive medium and protected from pathogens Bioreactors are useful for producing plantlets on a very large scale. So can you see here, these are the bioreactor, okay, where we have the plantlets growing in this bioreactor. You can see how they grow up and now these grown up plantlets are then kept on soil. They grow there into a new plant. So large number of seedlings or plantlets can be produced. in short time using minimum resources and materials usually plants produced by tissue culture and genetic modification techniques are disease free okay plantlets produced by tissue culture of the mary stem are virus free so they are free from you know diseases they are free from genetic modifications or the, they are free from viruses we can bring genetic modifications in them embryos from by conventional hybridization technique between two or more varieties may not grow fully for some reasons however embryos produced by tissue culture techniques always complete their growth okay so the problem with hybridization technique those embryo which are produced from hybridization and technique they do not or uh, they do not fully grow but however if you have this embryo of the plants by tissue culture technique the growth get completed rare and endangered plants can be grown by tissue culture technique and thus be protected from extinction we have those rare and endangered plants which are getting extinct so those can be regenerated those can be reproduced with the help of this tissue culture technique Similarly various parts and seeds of such plants can be preserved by tissue culture and those varieties can be protected thus 
these are the uses of tissue culture and biotechnology in case of plants next year we will study the use of this technique in the medical field for the conservation of animals so in 10 standard we will have a discussion of this technique again but in use how these are used in animals or the human beings particularly okay now here there are some commercial application of this biotechnology in particular tissue culture in agri tourism the tourism which are related to agriculture so let us see what are this agri tourism concept if sufficient land is available the emerging field of agri tourism would be a good business plantlets of flowering medicinal ornamental vegetable plants and fruit trees can be produced on large scale by tissue culture technique and by growing some of the plants fully a self sufficient agri tourism center can be developed okay we can develop agri tourism center if this tissue culture technique is applied on this plants or the flowering plants or medicinal plants which grow on the land okay land which is extra available to the farmers okay so now if we have chiku mango guava coconut custard apple and some other regional fruit trees shade giving local or exotic attractive plants ornamental and flowering plants butterfly garden medicinal plant garden organic vegetables and fruits so people visit such places okay they visit places which such attraction in large numbers selling plantlets seedlings fruits vegetable at such places can be quite profitable okay so if we have this kind of you know agri tourism of okay, the land which is available apart from the proper farming which is done so this can also help those farmers who are involved in this field they can have this uh, extra or supplementary growing of the plants which give profit to them now if we talk about agro complementary occupations those occupations which complement the agriculture they are called as agro complementary occupations so some of them are discussed here for example animal husbandry the number of cattle their variety total milk production cleanliness in cattle shed arrangements for health care of cattle this all comes under animal husbandry okay so in india animal husbandry is practiced for milk production and for using the cattle as help in farming operations for example cows and buffaloes are raised for milk and bulls and male buffaloes are used for pulling the heavy loads so in local indian varieties of cows like sahiwal sindhi ghee lal kandhari devni khillari dangi these all are the exotic varieties okay indian varieties etc and exotic varieties i'm sorry exotic varieties the varieties which are of foreign origin like jersey brown swiss holstein these are kept for the milk so here proper care of the cattle is necessary for clean and high yield of milk so the milk which we get from the okay from the sheds where this animals the cattle are reared they kept and they taken care of okay so this proper clean and high yield of milk is to be obtained in order to get that we have to take good care of them so what are the cares to be taken a balanced diet which is needed for their growth that is which includes all constituents of food should be given to cattle it must include fiber rich coarse food fodder and sufficient water the cattle shed where this animal lives okay this should be clean and dry with proper ventilation on under roof it should be clean and dry and there should be proper ventilation the flow of air should be there okay and then cattle should be regularly vaccinated by the veterinary doctors they should be properly taken care of so say we have this animal husbandry very common to those people who are involved not only in agriculture they also take care of the animals so they get good profit out of selling their milk
now we have we will talk about poultry farming which is another agro complementary business one can start okay the chickens which we eat comes all from poultry farming as well as the eggs which we have in our breakfast so rearing of egg meat yielding chickens is called poultry farming when the eggs and meat which we get in the market so they comes all from chicken and these chickens come from the place called as poultry farming where they are being reared on a large scale they are taken care of the people who are involved in this business they have to do what are the things they should follow the objectives behind development of new hybrid varieties from across between indian varieties like asil and exotic varieties like leghorn they are as follow the objective is to produce good quality chickens in large numbers to develop the ability to withstand high temperature to use by products of agriculture as poultry feed road island new hampshire plymouth rock black rock are varieties of chicken reared for eggs as well as meat okay so these are the species of uh, chickens which are being reared so that we get good quality of eggs and meat now in this comes two category one are called layers another called other are called broilers so layers are particularly raised for eggs they lay eggs on large number for example leghorn minorca ancona lemon and the broilers these are the chickens which are raised for meat production okay brahma log hen long cochin asil these are raised for for what for meat production now another business one can start with is sericulture rearing of silk worm okay the silk cloth which we get from the market is due to the silk being produced by the silk worm silk worms a kind of moth they are reared for production of silk so bombyx moth is the most important and the most commonly used variety for this purpose the life cycle of the silk moth consists of four stages namely egg larva pupa and adult so here are the stages being shown here egg larva pupa and adult moth so what happen exactly thousands of eggs deposited by female moths are incubated artificially to shorten the incubation period the larvae hatching out of eggs are reared or they are released on mulberry plants as this larvae are nourished by feeding on mulberry leaves so the larvae which comes out from the eggs they are kept on the leaves of mulberry plant or the mulberry trees they eat this mallar where they eat the mulberry mulberry leaves and after 3 to 4 days this larvae move to branches of mulberry plant the silk thread is formed from the secretion of the salivary glands they secrete sticky substances which are nothing but the silk or the silk thread larvae then they spin themselves okay around themselves this enclose themselves they spin this thread around themselves to form a cocoon a covering and the cocoon may be spherical in shape okay you can see that they they encircle themselves in this kind of cocoon okay you can see here they are lying on the branches of mulberry plant then 10 days before the pupa turns into adult all the cocoons are transferred before they turn into adult they are transferred into boiling water due to boiling water the pupa dies in the cocoon and silk fiber becomes loosened and this fibers are unwound processed and reeled varieties of various kinds of fi- fabric is woven from silk threads so before they turn into adult this cocoon is boiled and then the inside the cocoon that adult moth get dies and this cocoons become soft and they are being converted into threads of silk fabric and then silk fabric is used they are being processed for production of silk cloths so this is how another important business agro complementary business like sericulture can be done okay so here we have finished with this chapter chapter number 17 now inshallah next chapter we'll discuss in the next lecture i am i am going to share the exercise question of this chapter inshallah in your whatsapp group so we'll meet next time assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh